Did how do you even make friends as an adult? Are, are we adults? We'll fact check that later. <laughs> hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Spark for Spark. I am Amy, and I am here with Rachel, and we are taking you on a wild adventure um, as we go from work friends to in real life friends. So, Rachel, without further ado. Vigorous shaking. Really could be any. For those of you on the podcast, Rachel is vigorously shaking her <laughs> jar. <laughs> Sorry. Favorite toy growing up? Okay, so this one is a bit of like Amy lore because I don't remember, but I've heard this story a hundred thousand times and I still have the toy, which indicates to me that I probably enjoyed it. Because <laughs> like I like I was like packing up a couple of toys that I had for my childhood to drop off with one of my friends who just had a baby. Um, well, not just, it plays with toys now. Um, but like, I saw that one and I was like, no, that one stays. So there must be some like, um, so my family and I used to go to Florida once a year, um, to like go to Disney, whatever. Um, my grandpa would rent one of those like town homes. So we had like our own house and kitchen and stuff. It was really cool. Um, and he took me when I was three with my grandmother who died quite soon after. Um, but they like took me on a plane all by myself because my parents were driving and like, um, apparently like my grandmother had me call my mom and my mom was like, oh my God, how was the plane ride? And I was like, we went on a bus, which was the shuttle bus from the airplane <laughs> to the rental car place. Um, but my grandparents took me out to, where was it? Is it like an FAO Schwartz? Is that a real thing? Mm -hmm. It was like a massive toy store, like the fancy Ginormous. fancy toy store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were like, we're going to get her like a magnificent stuffed something. They were like, Amy, you can pick whatever you want from the store. It doesn't matter how big, like what it is, whatever. You can have whatever you want. And I like marched through the aisle and picked up a toy and was like this one and my grandpa said it was the goddamn ugliest thing in the entire store and I would not part with it <laughs> and it was it's a, is that not shocking <laughs> it's a purple elephant who's not anatomically correct he looks like a teddy bear <laughs> it's a teddy bear elephant who is purple and has a yellow tie with green ducks on it and I loved him <laughs> His name was Snoopy, which was weird because we didn't watch Charlie Brown. So I have no idea where I picked that up from, um, but I still have him and my soul will not part with him. <laughs> I don't know. Like, he's really ugly though. <laughs> like, I don't even know why they That's had him. Fabulous. Like my grandpa was like, there were like beautiful teddy bears and horses and like whatever you could want. He's like, and she made that thing. <laughs> it's like, now it's like makes total sense. It was on brand, <laughs> but at That's the time fabulous. they were a little alarmed. <laughs> Um, my head is suddenly gone blank for every toy that I've ever owned, um, which I'm sure will please my parents profusely. Um, my mother just announced to me several days ago that I never actually owned any Legos growing up, oh. um, which I was not under the impression was true because she had like this um, brown tin that she had in her classroom and it had lots of different Legos but none of them fit together you know how they have like the different sizes mm -hmm. of things and she's like yeah zero of those were actually Legos and I was like um so not those I apparently think, I don't think I um, had Legos either I did have a Barbie house that I could fit in if I like laid in it it was like the super Barbie dream house my, my parents got it the year my sister wrecked my birthday. They were like, here's a Barbie dream house. <laughs> like, it had like rooms and furniture. It had like planter boxes. It had like a French door opening to the backyard. Like it was intense. Like it had a garage for my Barbie car. Um, and there's like a picture of me like scooting through the bottom. It was like a little tunnel. Um, it's a picture of me like scooting through the bottom and they had put like my sister in the top as like a little nuggets. So, like both of us fit in this Barbie. <laughs> It was a Barbie bribe. I don't think I had any Legos good. though. I, I will say as the typical nerd that I am, that, um, I really just liked being outdoors as a kid. And mm -hmm. so like any bike that I owned, um, I feel like my, I feel like 
I once had, I believe it was red Schwinn bicycle. And I almost think it was my mom's when Mm. she was growing up. Um, But I can remember coming down my grandparents' driveway on it. And they had a very long, incredibly steep hill driveway. And um, like not and not slowing down and my grandfather running over and throwing the garage door open and me riding into the garage and just like getting stuck in all the crap and my grandmother like everybody joking like oh it's a good thing he never cleans out the garage because like it's what saved my life like all the shiznit holding me up as I rode in um but I would say like having a bike um I had a Fisher Price tape recorder so a lot of that like one side of a tape something the other side you could record on and we have like ungodly just like things of me like babbling and singing and talking and whatever um so that was that was probably like toy toy like an actual legitimate an actual child's toy um that was probably it um but also uh my grandfather put a golf club in my hand when I was four years old. And so um, I can remember getting my first set of golf clubs for Easter, like coming down and not having an Easter basket and having like my first set of golf clubs. And they were just my grandmother's junior set of golf clubs in a new bag with like, you know, new, new golf balls and stuff. So like, I would say anytime I got a new set of golf clubs, that was my favorite new toy but probably legit actual child person toy, my Fisher Price tape recorder. Yeah, I feel it. I don't know. Yours is such a better story. I mean, like I said, it's lore. It could be made up. I have no idea. It could could not be real. (laughs) It seems on brand though. Oh, I always get worried. Your, Your favorite date with a person that you didn't marry. What? Now I gotta go through the list. Thanks. You're welcome. What are people on the internet gonna think of me? <laughs> hmm. um, wow. That's hard. Why do you do this to us? I don't know. I have a few, I think. I mean, I didn't um I didn't dislike any of the guys that I dated. Like there's Um, I was engaged right before the person that I married and he was a real asshole and he grew up to be an even bigger asshole. And I can only imagine that still to this day, he's just out there being an asshole. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and I have nothing that I did with him that I enjoyed. Um, whatever the list is of things we did, I didn't enjoy it. Um, Which is not true because we went and saw Jekyll and Hyde together. I would you you ever do something and you're like, you know what I wish? I wish that memory didn't include that person because everything would have been perfect if they had like not existed there. That's how I feel about mm-hmm. anyway. Um I don't know. My my high school boyfriend, um, he was just a really good guy. You know what I mean? And I I mean, we played golf together all the time. So like we were constantly kind of, but maybe my favorite dates with him would be um, like, he would take me out in the woods on his four wheeler. And I just like, that's the best, like just being out in the woods and being like grimy and whatever. And I don't know. I mean, I could really, really anything I did with him. Like he was just such a good guy. Um, I did go out on, I did go out on one singular date um, with somebody my freshman year of college that I had kind of like, um, I had met him at a college open house, like very early in my high school time. And we had written each other, like all through my high school time. Um, And uh like we had it was just like a movie date but like it was just so much like pull in that because we had kind of been waiting so long to go out and we both waited through like other people that we had both 
been with and things like that. Um, and he's a nice guy too, but I don't know. Yeah. Probably anything that I did with my first boyfriend, I didn't, um, my actual first boyfriend would probably be like, um, your, your first who, uh, cause I just, I just, like, I just like, don't, I don't always count him. Um, he was a nice guy too, but, uh, like, um, I had a really, really good friend in high school that was two years older than I am. And I went to both of his proms with him and you, you know how you get to be an adult and you look back and you're like, he was really good to me. Like, just like genuinely nice not just like a nice guy, nice guy, but like a really good guy who like Mm -hmm. cared about me being okay and safe and like, whatever. Um, (laughs) interestingly enough, he and my, my boyfriend both have the same first name. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not really hard to please either because I can Mm -hmm. kind of have fun. If it's something I enjoy, I doesn't have to be special or fancy we just have to take you golfing that's all (laughs) it really is it really is you take me take me out on a golf course I'll be okay unless I have a bad day and then then you might you might not want a second date because I would I'm unpleasant I like trying to think like so we grew up like the city that I grew up in like mostly like we moved around a ton um, the city that we kind of settled in um, was pretty small. Like it was fields all around it when I lived there. Like it's a huge, like it's been amalgamated into Toronto now. Um, but back then like, there was really nowhere to go. <laughs> like there was really nowhere to go. Um, dates were like hanging out in parks, mm-hmm. like like on like the spinny things, drinking juice boxes. Like going to the mall. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That was, like yeah. we didn't even have a mall you could get to if you didn't have a car. Like it was, we were We didn't either. It. Ours was like over an hour away. So I feel like. <laughs> So this one is kind of like a date that I enjoyed, but like more so because of the after story. So like, I want to not, not what you're thinking. Hold, hold your judgment, Missy. Oh, that was no judgment. (laughs) I I was just interested. So I went on this date um, with this guy and he took me to a drive-in movie theater and I didn't know that it was there. Like it was like way up like ninth line. If you're from the hood, you know, oh. if you know, you know, <laughs> um, but so it was like way up ninth line in the middle of nowhere in a field, there was this awesome drive-in movie theater. Um, and I, at the time, like the guy, whatever, um, we went to the movie theater. That was it. Um, but at the time I was working in a Tim Hortons in a Dominion, which was like a popular uh, grocery store at the time. And so all the Tim Hortons girls were friends, but we were also friends with all the Dominion people because they really come and hang out at our kiosk when they were on break and stuff. We were all really tight knit uh, friend group. And so when we were at the drive-in, I found out that on Thursdays you pay by car, not by people. And we were all like dirt broke because <laughs> we're all paying for university like at some point in the future. Um, and so my mom had a minivan because we had so many kids. So w- we would like pack into the minivan. We'd be like hiding candy under the seats because you're technically not supposed to bring food. Like, and we would have one minivan and one car and we would bring um, like deck chairs and stuff to sit in front of the car. So we weren't so cramped. Um, and I remember one time, we went and saw War of the Worlds when that came out. Like they would do movie premieres. So War of the World came out with Tom Cruise. Um, and it was the scariest thing ever. We're like 16 years old in the middle of a freaking forest with our little Twizzlers. And in the movie, it starts raining. And in real life, it started raining. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then it started raining more. And we started, and we were like, oh, like, this is too much. This is too much. So we're like all back in the car. And the guys are like, it's okay. You don't have to watch. You don't have to watch. And we were just like, ah, no, no, no. Like, we're like, turn down the volume. <laughs> it was rough, but that was like our whole summer after going on this one date. Like, every single year, as soon as it opened, we were there every Thursday. Like, they could not find anyone to work in either store <laughs> on the Thursday night because we were all at the drive in together. Um, and I think that that's like one of my happiest things that I did as a teenager. Um, and I'm like so grateful that my parents let me use the car to like haul all of our little butts around um, because we fit way more people that way. <laughs> like, but we could go for like two bucks. It's like 15 right. bucks a car. You'd be surprised how many teenagers you could fit in a car. <laughs> like, I had a 94 Ford Taurus. You'd be surprised how many people I fit in that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dead or alive. <laughs> yeah, I would say that that's my best date because it produced the best experience overall. That's hilarious. 
That is not the aftermath I was anticipating, but thank you for okay. sharing. Hold your thoughts. Flat or sparkling? People? Why? <laughs> sparkling, always. <laughs> Probably water. I hate when they ask that. I'm not fancy. Just bring me water. Yeah. But I, don't put any of your dirty local city water ice in it. Yeah. So I would say flat. Here's the real question. What temperature do you like your water? I like my water at room temperature. Oh my God, me too. I do not like yeah. it freezing cold. So I usually do request no ice, which is partially because I don't want any of your dirty city water ice, but also because I don't want it to be freezing cold. Mm -hmm. Also, there's nothing worse than being like dressed appropriately for the occasion and having all of the ice be like smack, 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 smack. Like, because I'm not an adult and I can't handle it. So like maybe there's also some logistical issues in that but definitely flat sparkling things. Are, I just, I just don't like fuzzy. Yeah, I don't like don't fuzzy things. Nope. I don't, I don't. <laughs> so I opened this, but it was upside down and I thought it said chocolate. And I was like, damn it. We just did. And you no, know, it's this character defining moment. <laughs> oh, we get bonus <laughs> marks if it's chocolate related. Right. <laughs> what is my character defining moment? Man all of them uh, um I mean listen I have had a thousand times that I could have thrown somebody under the bus and I didn't and I will say generally speaking like that's how I am so like if I work with people and they're I just I just keep 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 it here um but wow man um So when I played high school golf, um, there were clearly some things that came along with being the only female on, uh, in the league at the time. Um, but there were a couple different schools that were kind of known for their cheating. And of course, uh, so for people that don't know where I played, we did not play match play, which is like hole for hole we played like overall so um everybody was put in twos from all the different schools there were six of you on the lineup and you put the number one and two person together the number three and four person and so uh I just happened to be uh number number one for a while um usually in the number one or two spot and then of course like uh later on when I was uh, older, um, toward the end of my high school career, usually in that spot, partially because of seniority, um, because we did have one, one, one really big kid come in that could really hit the ball. um, And he and I got to play together a lot. That was my favorite. Um, And then another kid that came in same grade that was, they were just really very talented. And I just couldn't out hit, you know, people um and so sometimes they would play in that spot but um there were there were definitely some times where I had to call out some cheating and then you know not be very popular which was already hard because I was trying to fit in so I would say um you know some of that space of of being in a place of being told that was part of my job because it is part of your job. It's why you're, why you have people from the other team playing with you. Right. So you can be honest and keep people honest. Um, but it's, it's very hard to play with people that are cheating when you're already at a disadvantage because of your size. Um, and try for me as a ninth grader who was 411 and soaking wet didn't you know weigh very much um to be playing against the one and two guys from other teams they were seen juniors and seniors in high school so some of these guys are six something 250 you know like they're big guys and I can't I just can't compete against that and so um it's very hard to compete against that and then have people be cheating and not have a little bit of like I was way over here with my ball and nobody would have known I accidentally 
you know, flubbed my whatever. And so I would, I would say like any of those times where I had an opportunity to do what was wrong and did the right thing, which was every time, cause I have too big a conscience. Um, yeah, I hate the, I hate the typical like sports or character building situations. I mean, also the fact that I ran cross country ran and was always the last person. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can, I can count on one hand, the number of times I wasn't the last person my entire junior and senior year. And so, um, being able to go out knowing you're probably going to be there is hard Mm -hmm. to do. Like, that's not an easy thing. Um, yeah. Typical sports, high school sports character building. I also have a sport one. I mean, I have, I have character defining moments. We'll do. I don't know how many you want to share here. Um, that might be for season two. Um, (laughs) so everybody gets to know us a little bit, right? Like we got, we're better friends, some of the surprise alive. Um, but I would say, I would say one really big character defining moment for me, where like, if I was the lead in my own movie, this would be the part where my people were rooting for me, um, is my first ever marathon. Um, I have problems with the ligaments around my kneecap. Um, and so something weird happened. I had 12 kilometers to go and my knee was like, Oh my God. Um, and I would say that like my character defining moment (laughs) there was, I was like talking myself through it. I was like, you have lots of time. You were going really fast. Like we're going to finish this race. You don't ever have to do it again. Like just finish it. We'll get the medal. We've got the medal. We're done. Um, and I power walked for 12 kilometers and still finished with like an hour and a half to spare. So I was supposed to finish in four hours and 10 minutes and I finished closer to five. Um, which like my husband was like, I was like even pace the whole time I was doing so well. And my husband was like, suddenly it slowed down. And then suddenly it stopped because he can track you on the app. And he was with his parents. They were eating lunch, rude. Um, (laughs) They were in a restaurant having lunch while I was like running around the town by myself. Um, And he was like, oh no, something happened. Like something happened. And it was that I had oofed my knee. Um, And honestly, that's the favorite way I've ever finished a race. Like there was something so special about that race. Um, and it's because I came through in a wave of people who had been injured. So there were people like, like supporting other people. There were people, there was like blood and bandages. Like I was in the crew where something weird happened and we all finished together. Um, and there was, you couldn't really see where the finish line was. It was like around a corner. Um, and one of the Olympians, one of the Canadian Olympians had done the race and she was standing there in like her little burrito blanket. Um, and she was yelling, the finish line is just around the corner. Your friends and family are there. If you can run, run around the corner so they can see you run and do the finish line. So my like little wiggly me and I were like, I'm ready to die. and you can see and look at the pictures that my father-in-law got as I was coming through the finish line. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh I'm on fire. <laughs> but there was something so special <clears throat> about knowing that she had finished, she finished and like they said, our, they said um, like a Canadian soil record. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she had stood there for hours bringing in the crew who was injured was like so special and I was like this is one of the moments where like I could have just quit um and I could have just like ram jam myself to try and run through and maybe permanently screw up my knee and instead I chose to walk and I was like you can you can bow out whenever you want um but you don't have to <laughs> like I remember being so tired and because I trained in miles because I use an American strategy so I'm training mm-hmm. in miles and I'm running in kilometers I can't remember how many kilometers a marathon was so I'm like running and it's like 39 kilometers and I'm like I don't know how much further I have to go I don't remember how far I have to go like this is terrible and I remember I was at the 39 uh kilometer benchmark and they were like handing out water so I was like getting a water I was getting a snack um and somebody who was like super ripped clearly like very fit this was not their first rodeo put his hands down on the table and was like I need a medic and they were like, oh, cool. Like the tent's like across the road. Like it's right there. I'm pointing at it. I can see it with my eyes. And he was just like, nope, you're going to have to get him. And he just like slid down. And I was like, <laughs> where am I? <laughs> what is happening? And he just went down. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. I like, yeah. I finished a marathon where the sporty people passed out. I was like, well, that's what you get for not pacing. <laughs> like, I'm a master pacer. <laughs> that's fabulous yeah long distance running will will get you every time 
Ah, I just, there's something about it though. Like when you finally get in that rhythm and you just feel like you can go forever, like those endorphins, like you can't buy those. No, <laughs> like, no, no, that it, it, it's, it's good. Stuff. Yeah. Um, I Might will say, <laughs> um, I will say I do enjoy watching people like show their character mm-hmm. like you're talking about like that Olympian who, who had finished like two hours ago you know was yeah. like still there um not over having lunch <laughs> like some people <laughs> eating her banana and dry bagel like a regular person um but just this last week um we're when we go to New York this summer we're gonna go see uh the music man um mostly because of the cast and uh there's a lot there are several people in the ensemble that I really like but one of the people um is uh this actor Max Clayton he's been in a couple other ensembles for shows that I just adore and I just love him I've listened to like if he's done an interview I've listened to it like he just um there's just something really energetically lovely about him, but Hugh Jackman is the lead right now. And I've heard a thousand good things about Hugh Jackman. Like anybody who's ever worked with him has said like just lovely things about who he is as a leader in casts and things like that. Um, But he tested positive for COVID the day after the Tonys and um, Max is his standby so he was the lead this this weekend um for for a few more days now I think and uh first of all I was like equal parts thrilled for him and like kind of bummed that I wasn't there for him stepping in even though like is it appropriate for me to admit that like I would have been okay not seeing Hugh Jackman in his role um but Hugh Jackman like made this lovely video about like thanking him for taking the whatever and like just so gracious and it's really I just enjoy seeing in that space people who are genuinely like lifting up the people that are a making things happen right now and b like that is a really hard job to step into because the more famous the lead is the more snotty pissy people are when they get there and they see the paper that has your name on it and the kind of collective even if it's not audible like Mm -hmm. over somebody being announced as playing something first of all makes me want to get up and be like you 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 and you out you don't deserve to be (laughs) like I get very angry but like I just thought that was very lovely. So we're talking about character. I thought that would be like, I just enjoyed seeing that this week. That made me happy Mm -hmm. as a person. Why can't I, I just should have mailed the papers to you because I literally can't. Oh my God. Okay. One thing you really should throw out that you have in your house. Is husband the wrong answer? (laughs) I'm not going to lie to you. I was just mulling over like a spouse joke. So I don't, I, you beat me to it and it friends. was very authentic <laughs> um, and not rehearsed mentally at all. Um, but <laughs> I don't think it's the wrong answer. I just don't think it's the right answer. <laughs> but your answer has no morality. That's so. a literal answer. <laughs> Um, I would say they're, so I have this pair of pajamas that I got a bunch of years ago. Um, and I have really long legs, but I'm in between a regular and a tall. And so finding things that hit my legs at the right point and like, don't bug my sensory issues are light enough that I can also sleep with them in the summer, but are like cozy enough that I can warm up in the winter. Um, it's a huge thing. So I got these pants years ago. They're like polka dot, like it's the whole deal. Um, And when we moved in with Eric's parents, like I was not allowed to do laundry. Um, Like that was out of my hands. We argued about it. I lost. That was not the hill I wanted to die on. Um, But the problem was like Eric's mom would go looking for laundry when it was time to do laundry because she was washing her mom's stuff as well. So sometimes like she wouldn't have quite enough and she'd just go and and pick up things 
Um, and so these poor pajama bottoms were getting washed like every two, three days. I'm like I wore underpants in them. It's not like they were dirty. Right. Um, but like they were getting washed constantly to the point where like the crotch just like gave up on life. Like it was enough that you could still wear them. <laughs> like, but not enough that I would like say answer the door in them, <laughs> which is problematic because we have dogs and we live in a corner lot. And so like anytime our dogs are being like rah, 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 at like six o'clock in the morning, you're like, do I go out and like <laughs> let people know that I wear these? <laughs> like, but I, I love yeah. them so much. Like I was like, can I pay someone to like put a lining in the middle? Like, I don't know. Probably. It, work. it wouldn't. They're like the waffle you would see. Oh, it, would, it would look weird. Boo. Like, I feel like it's time to part ways. But I'm like so sad. <laughs> that's so hard (laughs) and they like should have had more life in them but they were washed a lot um and so they died a premature death I don't like that for you no me either it makes me sad yeah as somebody who also understands how hard it is to find stuff I mean I'm on the opposite end right like I'm between a regular and like I'm not really between a regular and a petite size like I really am short Mm -hmm. The problem is sometimes those things have different measurements about Mm. them that aren't like, just because you're short doesn't mean that like you have skinny legs or whatever. Mm. Like I have a butt and I have thighs. So like, yeah, like I move, what are you going to do? I need muscles for that. Correct. (laughs) Kind of. So yeah, I feel that like not having it be on your stomach and like all of those things. That makes me so, I'm, hmm, are we sure we shouldn't like try and find a replacement? Before? I'm like trying I to talk looked you out everywhere. Of- like I bought those in a batch of pants. Like it was just one winter. I was like, oh, like I really like this style of pants. And I bought like five different pants. They were the only ones that came in that situation. Oh. All of the other ones are the same. They're too tight around my thighs or they yeah. like pull on my tummy funny. Yeah, I can't like, that. It was just this one flew out like a miracle. Like, yes. That's <laughs> very upsetting. Very upsetting, yes. I don't know. I should probably throw away anything I don't use. I'm not a person who likes too many stuffs mm-hmm. in my environment. So actually I don't really hold on to a whole lot of things. Um, generally speaking, when I finally talk myself out of getting rid of something, I genuinely do like two minutes later, have an upset moment about having gotten rid of it because it's probably something that meant something to me. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, why do I have this get rid of it? Um, but I did a huge purge of everything this year. So like all my jewelry, all my shoes, all my, so actually I don't really think, I mean, aside from like, I probably need a new mattress and pillow right now. I don't know that there's really too much for me to chuck because I just did that. But the answer to that would be everything I just threw away. I mean, really. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Who is your favorite Disney princess? Oh, hands down Ariel. See, yeah. so like I'm I'm loyal because that was like the first movie I ever saw on the big screen so like I have always been like mermaid hair and like like there's a lot of like solo mermaid swimming when we were like at the pool like I don't have time for you like if you don't want to play mermaids like you're not my people um and so it is like a huge joke in my family that out of everyone on this entire planet I married an Eric and he is tall dark and handsome <laughs> that escaped no one in my family they were like oh isn't that convenient like (laughs) that's hilarious oh oh. living the dream (laughs) I don't know I don't know um I say like I, I will be honest and say my favorite Disney movies are not the princess movies like my favorite Disney movies are like the sword in the stone and mm-hmm. things like that um bed knobs and broomsticks like Alice in Wonderland Pe- Mary Poppins mm-hmm. like um so if Mary Poppins was a princess we can make her pretty- if Mrs. Poppins. Banks was a princess I would totally pick her um <laughs> though we adore men individually we agree that as a group they're rather stupid is like that should have been the thing that I used for my quote the Ah. like I would like to I would like to go back and redo that um 
I would say Cinderella because people were treating her like shit and she got to have like the glow up. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't hate a bit of revenge, (laughs) Um, a little bit of karma, Um, but also because her prince had to work for it and Mm -hmm. he worked for it. Like, I mean, Prince Eric did kill a sea witch, although I find that highly problematic. I'm a huge fan of Ursula personally. (laughs) Yes. And he loved his dog and his dog loved him. So like if the dog loved him, you know, he had to have like not been terrible. Right. Yeah. But I would say like, that's the amount just, she had somebody do some work for her and I appreciated that for her. Yeah. I like that journey for her. Yeah. musical oh this one's hard for me all of them like all of them it's hard for me because i haven't seen most of them because i lived under the rock of god we're going to have to have a discussion sometime we're gonna have to like see what's on netflix and have a netflix party so we can experience them together (sighs) so musicals i've actually seen um one of my friends in high school was like we had like a musical theater thing in our community and so he was part of that and so I saw the little shop of horrors loved it um I saw something else I can't remember what it is I remember like the picture of us being like oh my god we saw it oh uh Ro- something Williams Roger Williams something cowboy boobs I don't know um ones that I like like for the music I was like w- went through a phase where I was obsessed with Sweeney Todd um again it's on brand loved Sweeney Todd and like Alan Rickman was in it so my mom allowed it oh yeah because she was like oh well like of course we're gonna watch this because it has Alan Rickman and he is our lord and savior yeah we'll let it we'll let it go (laughs) we'll allow it um and then my sister uh when she was in like later high school one of her friends gave her the wicked cd Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. we had that memorized in like a weekend um but that's really my like total exposure (laughs) to musicals which I have suspected for a while we will need to correct if we look uh, further this relationship. <laughs> oh, yeah. Education. There's like, uh, mm-hmm. yes. Um, I would say it would be hard for me to kind of pick a favorite musical of all time. Um, I'm obsessed with Camelot because I'm obsessed with the story of King Arthur and Guinevere. Um, so, and we did that my my junior year of high school. Um, and I got to be Guinevere and that was kind of really amazing for me. That was probably one of the highlights of my thing. So I really, like, I love that show. I love MAME. Um, and, uh, I mean, there's not, you know, West Side Story, like a lot of classics, like Man of La Mancha. Um, I don't know. We did, uh, we did this show called Grand Hotel when I was in high school, which is like kind of obscure. And um, I really en- like enjoyed doing that. Um, I don't know. I can pro- I can really find joy in almost any musical. I'm trying to think of like, what have I seen that was my favorite thing to see? Uh, one of the local high schools here did Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then I think the very next year they did Aida and there was in Aida like for okay that's gonna be another conversation I was in Floria Tosca okay (laughs) this is yeah we don't have time for that singer we need we like (laughs) need a totally we need this is gonna be a thing um but part of the jar (laughs) right we can't we still have an entire other season in this jar um but oh but there um the male lead that was Jesus and Jesus Christ Superstar and then was um, the male lead in Aida. Uh, like, so good. Like, I'm waiting for his name to be somewhere. Um, and they were just really outstanding productions. Um, I do like the show Aida, but I don't know. There's a lot, yeah. I mean, I could go on. What, I should probably just like, I don't like cats because I don't like cats. So, so here's a funny story about cats. So, um, 
my, I'm like a very introverted. So like I struggle going out with my friend group a lot and my friends are very extroverted and have like multiple things scheduled in an evening where they're like going to wrap up with you and head over to do something else. Um, and so my friends invite me to everything and I sort of like pick what I have the capacity for, which is usually none. Um, but out of the blue, like I was also having like a major depressive episode right before the Coco Rower hit. And so I was at nothing. I was just like recouping, trying to whatever, figure out what was going on. Um, but they were like, Hey, we're going to go to, um, there's this thing it's called drunk feminists. And what it is, is they play a movie and they serve lots of wine. And as the night goes on, everyone gets progressively more intoxicated and it's like, we're allowed to like call out you're allowed to sing along they have hosts who like make commentary on stuff during it and it's just a bunch of girls getting drunk and like watching funny movies um so they're like amy like i know you don't drink but i think you're really gonna like it because you can sing along whatever i've never seen cats um and so we went and we saw cats and the next morning they announced everything is closed and we were like oh my god cats closed the world <laughs> like and the world has not recovered I mean, we're kind of on brand we're so sorry we did not mean to but yeah, we, we broke the world. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Again. I'm devastated that that was the last thing you got to do. Yeah, we have like a whole chat. Happened. We have a whole chat about how the last time we saw each other was at the Cats premiere. I am so, Years I'm later, so upset. Cats still alive. And if you had told me that that had happened at the beginning of your depressive episode, I would have been like, well, now we know yeah, your triggers <laughs> are cats because so I yeah I just don't like the show cats um I enjoy Les Mis but not to the extent some other people enjoy Les Mis um I think there was something about it in high school that just made me like yeah that's great um anyway what does it mean when we say we don't enjoy working with people? Who put that in the jar? <laughs> Did I? Oh no. What was I thinking about? I really don't know. I, don't know I mean, sure. I mean, what was the question again? <laughs> what does it mean when we say we don't enjoy working with people? Here's the problem, right? I think I think part of the situation is that I genuinely say a lot of the time, like, I hate people. I hate people. Oh, that's and it's what that, it was. And it's that's that it situation, was. like, like my, my mom was like, see, you like people. And I was like, no, I don't like people. I care about people. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's hard because we both work with people. So like, it's, it's a lot to work with people when you don't really yeah. care for people. <laughs> Yeah. So it was, it was a big joke in my family growing up. Like we had to sort of like pick our careers at like 14, 15, where you had to do like a huge project on your potential career. And like, you had to like go and figure out what you were going to make and make your budget and decide where you were going to live. And it was all based on like your application for next year, um, where you were going to put all of that information together. So you had it, you could get anything that was missing. Like you actually had to look up how to apply for all your stuff. Um, so we were like really picking <laughs> like the year like I was 15 picking my career because this was how we were going to go to university um and my mom was like teasing and teasing and teasing and teasing that like I her her kid who hates people was going into social work and it was this like theme that lasted like I graduated everything like I was working in the community with people and she's like oh this is my social worker who hates people like and she was not wrong but I think what I mean when I say I hate people is I hate feeling people in my body. So like when I'm coaching, like one of the reasons that I'm as effective as I am is that we're kind of sharing an experience. And I know that sounds kind of woo, mm -hmm. but like I just from the way I grew up, the way that I'm wired, like I understand what you're saying because my body is mirroring what you're doing. Like there's this whole thing about like mirror neurons um, in your brain. So like my brain is mimicking in my body what you're feeling and it's fucking exhausting. <laughs> Like, yeah. so I limit the number of clients I have, like I limit the amount of times that I'm sort of visiting, um, my coaching community mm -hmm. just because like everything that you're feeling, I'm picking up on your micro expressions. I'm picking up on the specific language that you're using and I can't unwire it in my body. Yeah. And so I think, well, people joke that I hate 
people, like in general, what I really hate is feeling so depleted and so out of control of my own experience Mm -hmm. of being a person. And like afterwards, like after all my clients and stuff, like I go to the gym and I hit stuff and I throw heavy things and I like, people are like, Oh, like metabolizing calories. No, I am metabolizing emotions. (laughs) Yeah. Everyone get out. Like this is a palate cleanser. I'm going to sweat you out. Um, and then I come home and I do all of my recharging things. Um, so that's definitely what I was thinking of when I said, what do I actually mean when I hate people? I don't hate you. I promise. Um, and I don't hate the experience. Of right. You in my body. You no, know, I love, I love working with my clients. It's the thing that makes me happy. Yeah. It <laughs> fills my bucket, but at yeah. the same time, it fills my bucket and drains my battery Yeah, is the problem. And so without yeah. like, when I started like my job, like I didn't have the kind of boundaries that I have now. I didn't understand um, sort of the time or emotional commitment that goes into working with people. Um, now I rate everything that I do based on energy investment, mental, emotional, whatever. Um, like when I come here, like we meet for a couple hours, film a couple of episodes, I'm blocking out like hours before and after so I can prep and I can recharge. Yeah. Um, and that's how I do everything in my life is like, oh, like it's a five minute task. Like I really hate calling the dentist. And so I block off like an hour because I'm going to do it and I'm going to burn out and I'm going to need like a snack. (laughs) I'm going to need to walk around the block. I'm going to need a couple of minutes under my weighted blanket to kind of shake that out. And then we can go to the next thing. And if I'm not acknowledging that that's something that I need, um, then I generally do get into a place where I'm like, I just hate people because I hate the experience of experiencing them and not being able to sort of get out of that character, if that makes sense. It does. Um, I have very similar experience in that... um, particularly because of my human design space too like um we we release our people differently um and I do a few more woo-woo energetic protection things for myself but um the part of how I work with people is that I'm like, I'm clear cognizant. And so I just know, like, it just, it's just like, I don't know how I know. I just am telling you that I do, but of course, like pulling on that energy and concentrating and focusing and releasing the person before so that I can be present with the person now and, um, and not, and, focusing only on the person that I'm with and not anybody else that's in their household since I work work virtually you know it's not just like us in the situation Mm -hmm. and part of the reason I work virtually is because if I was in like an office building that I I couldn't function this is my own energetic space so I can function but Mm -hmm. I I have time blocked off um in the afternoon for me to like lay with my weighted blanket between like my morning people and my afternoon people. And then, um, I take a, a, the same amount of like, you know, 15 minutes or so at the very end of my day before I open my door and go out into my family. Cause I have no commute, you know, the opposite end of that is I have no commute. So I've been peopling all day, boom, I go out and I'm in other people's energy. And so I take a minute. Um, but the biggest thing is in the morning, my, my mornings start very slowly and it usually is either a, a walk or some really nice yoga situation because I have to do the same thing let it out Mm -hmm. Um, I wish I could like still do a lot of the stuff that you do for exercise because that I'm not gonna lie hitting something helps Mm -hmm. like we had um at the last gym that I was at it closed unfortunately but they had one where they took one of those soft boxes like not the wood ones like the squishy Mm -hmm. ones and they literally handed you a pipe and the exercise was hitting the pipe as hard as you that could. That I might be able to muster being able to do. Loved it. Could not get enough. They, were like, they, they almost took the pipe for me at one point and like, well, like you need to do something softer because you're going to wreck the box. Like, those I'm are not my- shocked. Like, Except for Amy. She's not exactly allowed to right. do that. <laughs> The modification for this for Amy will be not being allowed to do the exercise. Yeah. Like, you get a licorice. <laughs> Please sit and eat this Twizzler while you um worst class in school worst class in school oh my god I would say like like I didn't have a genre that didn't work for me um Mm -hmm. I'm pretty well-rounded when it comes to sucking at things um (laughs) I joke I kid um 
but I, I had this one, I had this one teacher, I may have told the story before, but I had this one teacher in my second year of high school. Um, and she did not like the kids with like the ISBs, mm. um, which is like the, for those of you who don't know, it's like a specific education plan for kids who are either gifted or the opposite of gifted. <laughs> um, I was in the opposite half, <laughs> um, but she had like a vendetta against us. And my mom um, was noticing that I kept coming home with like Fs and Ds and Cs and like, that is not like me. I'm like an A plus student all around. Um, and so she was like, kind of like, what is going on? And I was like, I don't know. Cause I'm putting the same things that everybody else is putting on and I keep getting an F. Um, and so my mom works in law. <laughs> and so she came down to the school and was like, hi, like, why is my straight A student getting Fs and stuff in this one class out of all of her classes? Like in last year I was an A, how am I an F this year? Um, and they did like an investigation in the school and they found that she had failed every single kid with an ISP. Um, and so what happened was they ended up having an, another teacher. So like she was still educating us because um, mm -hmm. we couldn't switch classes, but another teacher went through and marked all of our old stuff and marked all of our new stuff. And like, shocker, I had an A. Hmm. First class hmm. ever. What I find to be so interesting is that anything that I did not like in school growing up, I absolutely also would have mentioned the teacher and not the actual subject mm -hmm. necessarily. Um, and yeah, that's really like, like Why? my calculus teacher in high school. Absolutely not. Yeah. Like, I mean, but also just as a person, but it wasn't because I was bad at calculus or didn't like math or whatever. It was because he was the way that he was. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I really don't recall anything that I, I just have the word car on this piece of paper. Amy. Do I have a car? Like, have you driven a car? I don't know. Do you have I, your license? Like, I, I don't know what the question was. Your favorite car, the car you wish, your dream car, your first car. I don't know. I mean, I've never owned my own car. Um, like I was driving my parents' car and then I was in the city and you don't need a car. Um, right. Where I was living, where I was going, like my partner has a car now and I use it um, occasionally because he usually has it. <laughs> so like once a year I get to drive it. I'm like, I don't remember what I'm doing. I'm driving a death machine. <laughs> like, but yes, we, we have a car. <laughs> yes, I do. We do have a car in our house. Confirmed. <laughs> my first car was a 94 Ford Taurus um very not near 94 <laughs> um and uh it wasn't really my car until I left and when I left my parents gave me that car when I left and got married left and got married not left I used it at school but it was not yeah. mine um but I really want a white Jeep Wrangler mm -hmm. that's yeah. I would say if we're going first vehicle, my first vehicle um, was a Honda motorcycle. Of course it was. That also feels on brand. Where you were like 14 when my dad got it for me. My dad's a mechanic. <laughs> okay, well <laughs> like, that makes sense. He likes vehicles and he like he still is driving motorcycles to this day. Um, but like when I was old enough that I could actually like maneuver because it was so heavy, and I could actually pick one up off the ground, he bought me one. Nice. Nice. Um, first memory. Ooh. My so I got this one. My first memory was on my mom's 28th birthday. So mm -hmm. specific. My mom's 28th birthday. Um, we were at her parents' house and they lived on like the credit river. So they were on like a ravine. So they had like backyard and then death trap. <laughs> Um, and I was three at the time and we were walking down the stairs, holding hands. And I don't remember that part. Um, I do remember that I slipped somehow and they both let go of my hands somehow. And I was like doing somersaults down the stairs. And I remember like being able to see in between the steps. And I was like, didn't have any spatial perception because I was little and was like, I'm going to fall through the holes and I'm going to die in the ravine. Like, and I was just and then like bleh, on the concrete on the bottom. And so my mom spent her 28th birthday in the hospital with me <laughs> checking for a concussion. <laughs> and the reason I know I was holding both of their hands is because my mom still is like, how is it even possible that she was holding both of your hands and looking <laughs> at her down like 45 steps into a ravine? Like, how is that possible though? <laughs> 
<laughs> how does one make this happen? That's yeah, but that is definitely my first one, like for sure. I don't, I mean, it was three. It's early to be remembering things anyways, um, but that one is stuck in my brain. <laughs> so my mom remembers being born. Mm -hmm. She can like name and describe everything. Mm -hmm. And I can remember teething. Like I can remember my teeth coming in mm -hmm. and chewing, like having my like rubber bear, like yellow rubber bear teething ring. Like I can very specifically remember it. Um, so whatever age babies have their first teeth can come in, definitely that. Um, but and like every several years I ask my mom about this, um, I have a memory of my belly button, any trigger warning for anybody that isn't like medical things, which is hard for me. Cause I could literally talk about anything as I eat. So like, I have no perception of what might grow somebody out when it comes to bodies. Um, but I can remember my belly button not being closed. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask my mom, like, did my belly button like come open or And she'll be like, no, what is even wrong with you? And so all I can assume or imagine is that I can remember before my belly button mm -hmm. was like clipped and fixed and mm -hmm. put how it was supposed to be. So That's scary. I have like things about bodies being open. Like it's like a mortal yes. fear of mine to be open. Like, yes. Nope. Nope. Like my husband has strict instructions. If I die and it's not legally, like you don't legally need an autopsy, please do not open my body because <laughs> I cannot live my life knowing that at some point I will be opened. Like, no, when I had to have my surgery, it was like facing a mortal fear because like I would be open. It was like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. I'm like, if, if I die, please do anything you need to do to make sure I'm not still alive because one of my biggest fears is being buried, but not it's having actually been notes. dead probably because the medical situation that I've endured has let you know we can't trust these know. people so <laughs> okay maybe this will be the last thing three characters that represent your personality so like like people from tv shows people I don't know maybe Stevie for me I don't know So I think I'm probably shifting a little bit now, but <laughs> there's, there's this line that, um, the witch from into the woods says, and she says, I'm not, I'm not good. I'm not nice. I'm just right. She's talking to these people that are like coming back at her and she's trying to like make a hard decision and they don't want to agree with her hard decision. And she's like, oh, you're so nice. You're not good. You're not whatever. You're just nice. She's like, I'm not nice and I'm not good. I'm just right. And that's how I think that's probably a little bit of my personality. Um, did you watch Gilmore Girls? Mm -hmm. uh, Paris Geller, mm -hmm. when she's like, anything less than perfection will not be tolerated. 100% my personality. Okay. Absolutely. And somewhere between some like hippie character, like maybe Dharma from Dharma and Greg or whatever, like some hippie, like very open character and like, um, like Karen from Will and Grace. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I like how they do all come together, like as a cohesive version of you. That's hilarious. I'm like, yeah, like lining these people up, like I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm getting the vibe. <laughs> With a, like, with like a, like, like a glitter bomb of like Stevie from mm. Schitt's Creek. Like, I feel like yeah. that's fairly, fairly accurate. I feel like that's like very well-rounded. I would say for me, definitely pulling a Hermione Granger. Like, yes. For a shizzle. Yeah. Um, would definitely say Alexis Schitt's Creek. Alexis oh my gosh. 
like for the naivety but also the like I, I know shit that you don't expect me to know like I've also got some street cards mm. <laughs> like when she pulls out those like oh my god like I once negotiated or whatever whatever with terrorists like, I'm like oh yeah like the secret knowledge that's unexpected um so yeah I had another one. Oh, Daria do you remember that cartoon oh my gosh yes that okay <laughs> nailed it done I think that I think that's it I think that's where we end all right that, I, that's yes all right I love you bye okay love you bye